now that we are now, you know, early July, we are ramping up into football season. And with that being said, we're going to be ramping up the content here on the GSMC Sports Podcast. And we're going to start off the show today by diving into the list that ESPN put out. They pulled uh, NFL executives, head coaches, and scouts for them to rank the top 10 running backs in the league entering next season. So we're just going to be sharing some thoughts on that and going through, you know, rank by rank. Number one was Christian McCaffrey. Now this is probably very little surprise here. You know, McCaffrey was number two last year and probably not number one just because of the idea that there is some sense of injury concern with him, which, you know, you can make the argument that that would still somewhat be a little bit of a concern now, but last year played in 16 out of 17 games, led the league in rush yards and scrimmage yards. He was unbelievable, and he has been for, you know, the entirety of his eight-year career up to this point, and just somebody who can absolutely do it all. You know, you look at some of the contracts that have been handed out to running backs over the past decade or so, some players that have gotten injured, you know, Todd Gurley, Alvin Kamara, Ezekiel Elliott, some of these other players that have received these big time paydays and have sort of been a cautionary tale as to why you don't give out these massive contracts to running backs. And again, Christian McCaffrey has absolutely dealt with his fair share of injuries, but we're looking at two straight years where he's played in at least 16 games. And, you know, you have to just feel great about the overall talent that he is. He's basically, I think at least, the engine that kind of makes, I mean, Kyle Shanahan, obviously the head coach and play caller, is who is able to, you know, draw up all the plays, but the positional flexibility of Christian McCaffrey does make things just that much more impactful for the 49ers. And I think no doubt in my mind that he is the number one running back in the league headed into next year. Number two was a little bit of a surprise to me. Brees Hall, of course, of the New York Jets, played two seasons in the NFL so far and missed the majority of one of them with a torn ACL injury in his rookie season. And to see him this up high in this list probably does speak, at least to some degree, not as any disrespect towards Brees Hall, but kind of where executives feel about the running back position that you're getting somebody who, yes, just suffered a torn ACL a couple years ago, but is also, you know, a running back that doesn't have that much tread on his tires just yet. And also, I mean, for whatever it's worth, the fact that, you know, Brees Hall was able to return from a torn ACL injury tour in October of 2022, and he made it back for week one last year for the Jets and ended up having over 100 yards in that game as well. You know, it goes to show how far we've come with sports medicine as well. Just wanted to highlight that because, you know, a torn ACL in the NFL used to be a death sentence, especially for a running back. And the fact that he is now sort of back to this version of himself already is really encouraging there. But Hall, again, even still, I really like the player. I was surprised to see him this far up on the list. Now, I'm sure some of it is projections and moving forward. Hall should be one of the top running running backs in the league for some time. But last year, he didn't even hit 1,000 yards on the ground. Now, that being said, we all know what the situations are currently surrounding that Jets offense that, you know, as soon as Aaron Rodgers went down last season on the first drive of the game, no teams were afraid of the Jets passing game. So, you know, Brees Hall was dealing with loaded boxes the entire season and was still you know just under that thousand yard mark he did have a career high in receiving yards from you know college on 591 receiving yards pretty significant there now the jets were obviously checking down a lot but it does sort of go to show as well that if the jets do have a legitimate passing game moving forward he's going to benefit from it a lot because he's going to have more room directly in front of him to take off on the ground And now, you know, it's not like his profile necessarily coming into the NFL was ever that he was going to, 
that he's at least shown that he is this, you know, dual threat running back of rushing and receiving. But last year, I thought that he did very well demonstrated that. And again, weird circumstances surrounding him, but he's only going to continue to get better. And again, oh, it was a surprise to me seeing this him this high, but you also have to give your respect to him because he is one of the up and coming players in the NFL. Number three is Nick Chubb, and this is obviously one of the most strange players to try and put into a position here just because of the injury factor. Nick Chubb was number one in this poll a year ago today, and it was very well justified. You know, Nick Chubb is the best pure rusher, I would argue, in the league, plus he's no slouch either in the receiving game, but you know, when you look at that injury that he suffered in week two against the Steelers, tearing his ACL and MCL, had the additional damage to his meniscus and medial capsule all in one hit. It was a brutal, brutal injury. And it's not the first time we've seen Nick Chubb suffer these types of injuries as well. It was the same knee that he had seriously injured when he was in college at Georgia in 2015. It required two surgeries in the fall to be able to fully repair that left knee of his. So, you know, fingers crossed that he's going to be able to come back because, again, he is just an absolute monster of a running back. And he is a huge difference maker as well for the Browns. Now, they just made the playoffs last year even without him. But Nick Chubb behind that talented offensive line is a scary force there. And, you know, who knows what sort of comes of Deshaun Watson, where he is at with the Browns franchise at this point. But, you know, they're hoping that he can take a step forward and having Nick Chubb available to him and a dominant run game would be a massive part of that. Because as much as the Browns defense is still very talented, I mean, you're asking a lot of that defense to replicate the type of season that they had that was, you know, borderline historic last season for the Browns, obviously up until that playoff game. Number four, Saquon Barkley, of course, signed by the Philadelphia Eagles in free agency this past year. You know, he's somebody that has definitely had a more illustrious, you could say, profile up to this point in his career versus a Brees Hall um, but you know, there are some injury concerns with Saquon as well. Like we just talked about, that's kind of something you can throw into the conversation with just about every running back on this list. But you now Saquon is a do it all guy. That's going to add a much improved dynamic out of the backfield. You know, Deandre Swift was no slouch necessarily last year, but he also did very much benefit from having, you know, one of, if not the best offensive line in the NFL. And Saquon is going to now, obviously, without Jason Kelsey on that front, but Barkley is going to be an awesome fit. I'm super excited to see what Kellen Moore is able to cook up with Saquon Barkley and Jalen Hurts, who Hurts is going to be healthier this year. You would have to hope he was dealing with some injuries that limited his mobility last year. Him and Barkley as a read option threat is something that is going to strike a lot of fear in defenses next year. So this is about the range I would put Barkley in as well. Number five was Jonathan Taylor. Taylor, you know, has had a very loud career up to this point, despite it being so short, where, you know, there was absolutely an argument for him to be higher. I think last year when this list came out, coming off of a down year, he was number six. And the Colts are in a little bit of a weird spot. A good, not great offensive line obviously had you know, different things going on with that quarterback room, Anthony Richardson going down early in the year, Gardner Minshew taking over and being a good option for them. But again, I just talked about the read option threat of Hertz and Barkley. We'll see if the Colts decide to lean into that type of offense or if they're going to just try and keep Anthony Richardson as clean as possible. But I mean, two, you know, physical specimens, absolutely, that are very versatile, and I'm really looking forward to that combination of the two of them as well. Number six, 
Bijan Robinson, and he's Bijan is somebody who you know his stats don't necessarily pop off the screen necessarily from his rookie season, but obviously it was a conversation all year long the way that he was used and having Arthur Smith sort of you know defending his strategies in terms of how to use Bijan. He is going to continue to get better. You could see in a vacuum, you know, the type of dynamic movements and the cuts that he has they just stand out on another level he is an up-and-coming player I still don't know if I were the Falcons that I would have taken him in the first round last year I kind of wish Bijan was himself in a better position but I mean Falcons fans you should be looking forward to this being a franchise player I think somebody who is going to exceed his rookie contract and you know we'll see what the price point looks like in a couple years from now but somebody that's probably going to be in Atlanta for a while or at least playing in the NFL for a long time number seven was Josh Jacobs and honestly I think that ultimately when you look at the very heavy workload he had in the 2022-23 season the fact that he led the NFL in touches that year the fact that we saw him physically hold up is a great sign Jacobs it feels like he's been in the NFL forever but he's still just 25 years old and again the fact that he has shown the capability of being this absolute workhorse of a running back and then he's moving into this new system with the Green Bay Packers where they're looking to push their chips in a little bit more. I know that the statistics weren't necessarily the same in 2023 as they were in 22 but Jacobs was in a very lackluster offense last year with the Raiders and I think that now that he's with the Packers we're going to see him put up big numbers once again I do think that he is an upgrade over Aaron Jones even though Aaron Jones who you know just spoiler alert here did not make the top 10 he was on the honorable mentions and I like Aaron Jones a lot I think he absolutely had a case to you know slide into we'll get there when we get there but I probably would have had him number 10 about that placing but Josh Jacobs is an excellent player and it's important to not forget about him after a little bit of a quieter season last year. Number eight was Jameer Gibbs, of course the rookie sensation out of the first round selection for the Lions last year and again this is another player when you look at what a modern running back looks like in terms of being able to get it down done on the ground and in the passing game Jameer Gibbs is kind of the embodiment of what the Lions and you know where the league as a whole is sort of looking to go with the direction of their running backs and you know Gibbs has a very bright future last year they used him a lot in tandem with uh, David Montgomery I'm gonna be curious to see whether or not they prefer to lean into you know evening up the workload so they don't risk you know putting too much pressure on Gibbs or whatnot but you know when when they drafted him there were stories coming out of Detroit that they were interested in seeing what he could look like if he lined up on the outside as a wide receiver and that's something that we didn't really see all too much of now again was a great receiving threat last year but curious to see what his evolution looks like in the NFL because I think he is capable of a lot so eight is almost even a little bit low to me but um, let me know how you feel in the comments section. Number nine was Derrick Henry. And this is another one where it's just very strange to sort of, you know, see him this low on a running back list considering he has been, you know, I think the easiest selection of a hall, future Hall of Fame running back over the last decade or so where, you know, he has had... Over, more than 2,000 carries over the last eight years and typically we see the way that that sort of drags down a running back's career having that high of a workload and of course there was that one season for Derrick Henry a couple of years ago where he was dealing with the foot injury I believe as I double check here that was in 2021 but 
you know, has led the NFL in attempts in four of the past five years, which I get it. That is a very scary thing for a lot of franchises, but even still, he's just putting up results where it was 1,500 yards in 2022, still 1,100 last year, and he is going to be an awesome player to throw in the mix with Lamar Jackson and I'm so excited to see what that rush attack looks like so it is going to be really interesting to see moving forward and then number 10 we have Travis Etienne of the Jacksonville Jaguars where another situation where I was pretty surprised about seeing him here now I'm high on Etienne's upside and you know maybe I'm a sucker for the you know the at least mention of him and Trevor Lawrence teammates in college were a really good tandem them and seeing how they're going to pan out in the NFL. I still, I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm entirely there yet with ETN. Now he's had some injury concerns early on in his career. And that's not to mean that he can't eventually come around, but on this Jaguars team that it feels like we've sort of been at least to some degree sitting around waiting for them to reach the expectations we've put on them to some degree, at least we just haven't necessarily been there yet. And ETN is kind of been part of it. Now, I think the upside with ETN is absolutely there. I probably would have went with somebody a little bit more established. You look at the honorable mentions, Aaron Jones, Kenneth Walker, Isaiah Pacheco, James Cooks, Alvin Kamara, Joe Mixon, DeAndre Swift. Now, I am by no means saying that entirely all of those names are better than etn but i don't know i probably would have gone with aaron jones maybe even kenneth walker maybe isaiah pacheco there's just you know etn is i would say on the same tier as some of those honorable mentions as well but let me know how you feel in the comment section we're going to be taking our first break now and then when we come back on the other side, we have a lot of basketball topics to dive into. So we will be doing all of that after this quick break. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. <laughs> 